Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question this, that is really how do you detox from the female psychopath? How do you sort of get that craving, that stimulation, that hyper arousal, or just sort of a negative desire out of your system? I think that's a great viewer question because a lot of viewers can potentially relate to this. When we talk about sort of detoxing from a female psychopath, realize that there is a lot of energy oftentimes sort of locked in to an energetic direction, just sort of feeding them and keeping this sort of hyper arousal going that we see in a female psychopath relationship. Hyper arousal meaning they're always super excited. They're always super aroused. They're always sort of giving you innuendos, looks, um, just sort of getting you into that, um, you know, just sort of uh, euphoria state, getting you into that sort of gaslighted state, you know, jumping ship from your normal life, jumping ship from your values, jumping ship from the real you and the core of you, and importantly, sort of the heart of you, realize that they sort of carve it out, yank it out, you know, send it, your heart rolling on down the road, and then, you know, they want to take you and just sort of your physical, hyper-aroused self for a ride. Meaning, you're, you'll feel sort of empty or sort of half-present when you're sort of trying to detox. And the main goal to making through successfully is getting some perspective on the relationship. It's very difficult to get perspective on the relationship though when you are in a hyper aroused state. And sort of and you're really just sort of going to be triggered and launched into that. Oftentimes even just when you think about them, you see their name, you see their picture, or here comes that phone call at 3:24 in the morning and you know it's setting you you know into that you know lifestyle that you might have had or that desire you had with them and it could you know they can hover you from 10 20 so many odd years later um and and so those it might sort of try to break you down and set that whole tainted viewpoint that sort of troubled and beguiled mindset you know, beguiled meaning just sort of still in the mystified magic, just sort of, you don't really have two feet on the ground. You're sort of, you know, in this sort of, you know, the high seas of love or and euphoria, but it can become dysphoria, meaning the euphoria can then become very unpleasant as you try to detox and get control and perspective of your life back. Um, you know, the, the hyper arousal, it sets a... Um, addiction cycle up and addictions will really get set up when there's a high level of stimulation involved. It sort of etches a new pathway in in, in the brain and that sort of, it, 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 it continues to want to drive and feed itself. It's It will develop that craving cycle. So when you don't have that level of arousal, for a while, it'll feel, either, it might, you know, so like detoxing, pulling back, going no contact, wondering, you know, if you should stop, you know, and how do you reconsider and reconfigure the relationship? How do you approach it? How do you put it into a nice little box and say, okay, that was then, this is now, and I have boundaries and standards now, and I'm a different changed person, and I have a security, and an I am within that's not, you know, set back, you know, on, on fire, you know, um, every time I see their name or their phone call. So I'm not like, you're not tempted any more. You're not at that tipping point. You're not at that point where you're sort of wobbling and, and sort of weighing things back and forth. Um, you know, because you, that sort of becomes a sort of vacillating state, meaning it keeps you in that stuck state, which can then lead to unhappiness because, really your happiness is going to be probably connected with being free and, and being able to be your real authentic self and then finding a real relationship. But even if that means going without,
for the time being. And that might be mean going without for a good amount of time, but that is the best thing you can do for yourself. So you need to remind yourself that, put your foot down and keep it there and do not look back. You know, delete, delete, delete. Getting, you know, when they call, delete, you know, that, that message. Delete the text. Delete the pictures. Get, you know, delete the Facebook. Get it all out. You know, you have to believe that you can make it without them. So, you know, you, you might though subconsciously on a very deep level, on a very sort of whisper level, just still, you know, sort of run the cycle of the, the fairy tale, um, the fantasy that's based with that sort of fantastical and hyper aroused love bonding chemistry, altered chemistry state that you get just sort of in these lofty affairs with these individuals who will take advantage of others. And even though it seems like a positive, um, you know, and, you know, particularly for those men who are in relationships that were, you know, maybe either marriages or you're engaged or this is your fiance or, you know, your romantic interest, your partner, significant other, what have you, um, th that hyper arousal, you know, leads to just sort of this whole different compartment in the mind of a vision of just sort of this ultimate life, this, you know, super ideal partner, um, you know, better, best thing since sliced bread. I didn't know it could be this good. You know, if you've had a lot of these thoughts running through your mind, you know, and you were really, really, you know, gel, super glued to them emotionally, you know, and you felt it was this amazing fit and this forever after, we're going to go riding off into the sunset and have this sort of allegory and fantasy and fairy tale sort of blissed out experience, then this is going to create a sort of toxicity or an addiction, a hyper arousal, oftentimes that's set up in place by um, violating of your boundaries, which you didn't know that you had, but the it makes easy pickings for a female psychopath to see those men who, you know, need um, a trophy uh, woman, who need a... Um, a, a partner, you know, who is lonely, who has a stable relationship, who, you know, needs to get rocked a little bit, um, men who didn't know that they had specific needs to feel like a man, or needs to feel attractive, or needs to feel young again, or needs to feel that they're powerful, you know, whatever it is, the female psychopath, when, when they are sort of, you know, grooming and targeting their their prey because they are interspecies predators. You you have to make no mistake. And if you've sort of fooled yourself, well, I'm, you know, I can get them and, you know, I can handle this, you know, be careful with those statements um, because it, there's a lot of trickery and deception going on at the level oftentimes that you are not familiar with. You are not used to and oftentimes not equipped to handle and manage when you start exposing and seeing what is behind the curtains, what is behind, you know, this relationship um, that is deliberately and pre-calculatedly structured for your demise. And I don't make that statement lightly. And, you know, um, that is unique for each and every person, what that means. And, um, and so, you know, this sort of detoxing, if you have been in that hyper aroused state, which means it becomes toxic. And then what's un unfortunate is then this toxicity, the pain creates the desire for more pain. So it becomes just sort of flipped or distorted, gaslighted. Good man can be made bad, you know, not made bad, but, you know, made to be associating with something that is not in your best interest that removes you from yourself, if you will, separates you from that integritous part of yourself that is wholesome, that is stable, that is, you might feel regular, normal, or you might have felt as boring, you know, they will just sort of launch you into a next level identity. And oftentimes, if that is the case, because a lot of female psychopaths will target, you know, and see those unspoken needs in men and then exploit them. So part of the toxicity is when it when part of the relationship were a good fit, oftentimes you fit like, you know, a hand in a glove, a perfect puzzle piece with these individuals is, you know, when 
you know, they, you have, they have really met your needs. You feel a real click right away. You know, wow, this person gets me. Wow, this person is so much more fun than my wife. <laughs> wow, this person is so much more supportive than my secretary. You know, this is a great fit. And then you feel that there's these needs being satisfied within you that you didn't know that you had and it makes you feel very comfortable. You're putting your guard down. You're making yourself vulnerable because you feel safe because these needs are met. The, the female psychopath will capitalize on these situations and take you for a run for it, for all that you're worth for as long. And then, you know, when things are changing, you know, in other words, when the relationship starts to get more like, you know, these sort of talks about getting married or having another child or traveling when they get too real and then you start, you know, you know, trying to move in with them or they move in with you or you have real talks, that's when you find out all of a sudden that they're not available or that they're, you know, making a run for it, that you find out that, you know, someone comes, you know, calling you and saying, hey, I'm the other guy in the picture, it's time for you to leave or some strange experience which makes it impossible for you to fulfill the next part of the relationship. Or even more troubling is when you do fulfill the next part of the relationship and they take you for hook, line, and sinker, and then you're really in over your head. Perhaps you've made a lot of sacrifices financially, professionally, or for your time. And next thing you know, they're, you know, treating you like, you know, someone that they don't even know. And all of a sudden they've got another partner and You've got these mind-boggling discussions that just throw you, you know, way into this, you know, movie, just sort of, uh, you know, what you see in movies, just sort of fear or terror or confusion. You know, it can be very confusing and oftentimes there's not a lot of people to talk about this. Oh, just give it up, man. This, this, you know, and they just don't understand <clears throat> the degree of hyper arousal. So, you know, one thing with a female psychopath that creates that, you know, that, that sort of hook, line, and sinker where they've sort of got you hooked. They've got you, you know, just sort of really, um, you know, like licking your chops, you know, wanting them so much. Um, the hyper arousal. Um, I talk about this, you know, where they, you know, um, will use that predatory stare, which seems very seductive. You know, men just sort of lose it, lose control, and, you know, they can become, you know, just like at their beck and call um, because if they feel all of a sudden, you know, they've, you know, if, if they had a weakness where, you know, your your manhood was in question or you've had other situations, you know, and then they, you know, you feel like a real man so they can then exploit your manhood and then make you feel, you know, very defenseless, very powerless and not like the man that you are. And it can be very terrifying. It's like, how could have this have happened? You know, um, because the hyper arousal gets it, it, it causes a distortion of feelings, thoughts, perspective, um, values, and really reality. Um, you know, the hyper arousal oftentimes will involve um, violation of no normal boundaries, which then become, you know, scary, titillating, and then desired. So, <clears throat> you know, um, good men can be made bad men, uh, meaning. <clears throat> Things that you always stood for, you know, they will walk away from. They will abandon their values, abandon um, lifelong dreams. You know, you might have your child's, you know, college fund um, all saved up and then they convince you, you know, that it's okay to cash that in and then go set up for a new place for them in Naples, you know, or set up for a new cottage for them in, in Vail, you know. And then next thing you know, <clears throat> you don't have the keys to your own place anymore and, you know, it's, or the car, you know, things aren't there, you know, it's just the whole thing can be very much like a movie, you know, that you see written in, in Hollywood that, you know, you've got, you know, pictures of, of you up and then they're taken down when the other guy is there, or you've got shaping and shifting of outfits or rooms or whole settings that they almost sort of change up depending on who they are targeting. Um, so it can be completely misleading but you know the problem is that hyper arousal where they violate you know through high risk and impulsive interactions oftentimes 
you know, very stimulating, very arousing, using that sort of, <clears throat> psych, you know, um, psychopathic word salad when it's meant to seduce, you know, just twisting in tundras, um, just sort of enigmatic speech, you know, um, that is meant to get you very seduced and, you know, have a lot of neurochemistry kind of bubbling within that causes you to lose just sort of regular thought patterns that are productive that might feel, you know, it's like the real you, but there becomes a fog, um, there becomes a gaslighting, there becomes this euphoria that men then desire and they feel like all pumped up, they feel alive, they feel invigorated, they feel young again, they feel manly again, attractive, whatever it is, you know, that, you know, she's done, you know, to make you feel that way, you know, what are some things, you know, that, you know, taking me by the hand and, you know, you know, oh, just lift me up over this puddle or, you know, lift me up over these stairs or, you know, do, you know, whatever it is, you know, you know, come rescue me or whatever it is that made you feel like the knight in shining armor or something that made you feel extra special and like the man you've always wanted to be and finally someone is there. So there's a lot of this sort of, you know, but, you know, high risk behavior, which means, you know, um, don't worry, they won't see, you know, don't worry, you know, let's just do it here, um, you know, and then it, you know, you're doing things that are amor you know, immoral for you or really against your values, your identity, your I am, you know, that is positive and good, but then there's this sort of abandonment of, of these good qualities of self. It's like a leeching out where because you have these, it's like an, uh, it's like a super victory for a female psychopath if they can get you to abandon those. It's like, it's just like a notch in their lipstick case. They're just like, you know, I got this guy for that. It just makes them feel jacked up or juiced up or powerful. <clears throat> they get sort of a dopamine hit or a reward from this hyper arousal and just seeing people just sort of, you know, um, breaking down for them. It's very, it can be very sadistic, um, meaning that, you know, they take pleasure in other people's pain, um, which you would, you know, is, is very, um, just settling. And especially for the men who are, you know, who are in the cycle, oftentimes they don't want to admit weakness or admit what's going on, or they're not even able to see it and identify it as such because they're in such in that gaslighted state, um, that they, they, they can't recognize that they've ab abandoned ship until the ship sails away and they go, oh my God, I'm standing here on the island. The ship had sailed away. How come no one came to get me back? It's like, because you were in this gaslighted state, hyper aroused, and then you were propelling that. And then the female psychopath eventually, once things get too real, or you know, you're know you in that hook, line, and sinker, and you're trying to take it to the next level, they've either got you know other plans or double or triple plans that they are going on and juggling simultaneously, you know, and they have no intent of fulfilling the long-term vision, you know, the getting the house, getting the kids, getting the dog, getting the cat, whatever kind of talks that you had had, you know, you will, you will find that you become intoxicated and it, it does become an addiction. It becomes a physical desire in the, in the, in, in the muscles, you know, um, I, I liken it to just sort of chemicals, like in your science class, if you were to put them in a beaker and all of a sudden they start, you know, start shooting out sparks and smoke and maybe it smells like blueberries and roses and, you know, it, you know, you, you've got, uh, you know, stars that shoot up in the sky from this tube, you know, and you, you, you pour in all these different neurochemicals and, you know, it just starts bubbling over and spilling all over the floor. It just sort of, that's sort of I, my imagination and kind of explanation of what's going on neurochemically. There's all these different neurochemicals and hormones of stress and arousal and passion and love and loyalty and then desire, which are sort of into this combination that really aren't supposed to be combined in that beaker. It's like someone went over and said, well, let's just get a little packet of this and pour this in plus a little a couple drops of this. Let's put on the Bunsen burner and see what happens Why the science teacher isn't looking. You know, they told us not to do this, but I think it would be really cool. 
anyway. And it's like, you're not supposed to have all these chem, you know, chemicals in that test tube. And then all of a sudden you get this sort of response where it's just, you know, smoking and bubbling over and you can't put it back in the test tube. It's just going to run itself. It has to run itself out. So that's what the detox is, is like. You literally have to let it, 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 it settle down and let it, it, it calm itself it, its way out. Um, when you are hyper aroused, you know, that person, um, that female psychopath is always in your face. They are always in your life. They're always in the top of the list, top of your vision, top of your thoughts, top of the day, top of the night, whatever it is. They, you know, um, get into this really, you know, priority state with those men. They become, you know, they, they break them down, meaning, you know, they get you into, once again, that predatory stare, that intraspecies predator, that reptilian gaze where it's seductive. But, and it's not just like the warm motherly nurturing, it's oftentimes wrought with other feelings, which are part of the hyper arousal and then the desire, and then just sort of the psychopathic, um, enigmatic talk, you know, where they use double entendres, double, triple meanings in their communication, um, just strange, odd, odd statements that are titillating and get, you know, get people buzzing. Um, the, their targets are sort of buzzing. Like, what did you say? What did you mean by that? And then they just sort of educate them and, 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 t and you know, and, and get that, you know, talk going, um, and just sort of wrapping them around their finger with their sort of enigmatic speech patterns, which are oftentimes different than the usual relationship that they have. That's part of the hyper arousal where they're just kind of wondering, what did you mean by that? What did you mean next? And you're, the men that they target then are just sort of, you know, developing this sort of second language um, with them. They're learning just sort of an, another, you know, they're being schooled on how to relate to this woman or how to be a man, um, as, especially as it relates to this level of sort of communication, which can be just sort of maybe, it can be a new sense of humor, the way that they use their speech patterns. Remember that the female psychopath lacks a conscience. They lack a sense of right or wrong or morality. Most women have a very strong sense of morality, especially when it comes to, you know, nurturing and what they will value and, and, and stand by. There's usually this self-protectiveness that most women have that the female psychopath is just devoid of. They, they, they just have an, an absence of fear. They can seem very fearless, very strong, very provocative, very, um, otherworldly, you know, just so just like, you know, a uh, miracle, uh, fantastical, um, you know, just from, you know, you know, sent from above. I mean, you might have all these sort of poetic feelings about this person. Um, and that's part of the toxicity and then part of that hyper arousal. And it's part of their, 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 their game, um, of, of just sort of getting you, um, just sort of under their, um, under their spell or under their, um, you know, chemical control. It becomes a very chemical control because they know just what to do by observing you. They don't have a conscience. They don't really have the same emotionality, sentimentality that, um, most women have. You know, most women, you know, are into, you know, hearts. They might have a very soft side, a very gentle side, emotional, caring, nurturing, you know, sentimental, nostalgic side, <clears throat> you know, flowers, chocolate, pictures, walks on the beach, you know, these romantic things, you know, you know, quote unquote, that women love, <clears throat> you know, um, things like that. And these types of women, you know, they don't seem to be burdened with all these. Um, and so they, the relationship might take a very different feel with, with them. And so a lot of men might find this very refreshing, giving them a respite from their everyday regular responsibilities. It becomes like an escape, but part of the gaslighting that these women, um, who have no conscience do is that they have, you know, they know all these different buttons to push, um, in order to get you you know, to get their targets and, 
And so to them, it's just like puppetry. It's just like puppet play. To them, it is an amusement. It keeps them out of boredom. It keeps them just sort of, you know, um, feeling that they are, you know, have it going on and it gives them that, that dopamine hit, that reward hit that they are hypersensitive to, especially when it comes to just sort of the setup for the big letdown. Oh, it, and it can be, you know, very demoralizing and very disheartening for men to go through that. So, um, you know, the detoxing is realizing that the hyper arousal is what was, you know, groomed. That's what was cultivated. So, you know, it's okay to have the, down, you know, as, as you unplug, as you go no contact, as you work on your I am and you, you know, start removing <clears throat> And, you know, those, those, that, the, and understanding that sort of hyper arousal and realizing it, it is an addiction as such. It's not a foundation for a relationship, but this is a ploy that the female psychopath will use in order to keep their supply connected to them for whatever reason. So, you know, the, you have been targeted for a, a, a reason. It's because either you have something that they need or something that they want, um, you are, um, a basic, <clears throat> you know, basically an outlet for their boredom. Um, you are, you know, someone who they can, you know, feel a reward, um, from just sort of being around, meaning you have something that they need. In other words, that they can study you, observe you to quote unquote, learn how, you know, you know, the relationships, you know, um, how people get sentimental and then how they can study and then mimic this <clears throat> because they don't have that, um, that side, they don't possess that. So if they can observe and learn and soak it up like a sponge from you, then they can mimic and then mirror back, you know, more of that sort of, you know, womanly side when it's nothing but an act, it's nothing but a, a false, uh, persona. And they, they will create a persona unique for each, each, each target that that person needs. And then it, they'll become something, com, somebody completely different for another person. They literally are like, um, they literally are like transformers or shapeshifters, or they really do sort of metamorphosize. Like you'll see like a salamander that changes its color or those octopus in the ocean that change the appearance of the texture, like a camouflage. They, they really do like physically have a, a metamorphic ability um, to, if you've ever seen, you know, they're, they're them sort of metamorphosize in front of you. It's like a real physiological change that you see this person just sort of become almost like another personality. Um, uh, you know, with a whole different name, a whole different way that they carry their body, a whole different aura, a whole different demeanor, a whole different facial expression. You know, their hair and eyes might even look like it changes color. Their skin might even look different. Um, their body aura, just sort of the energy, the way that they usually look and carry themselves and the way their body language is might be completely different as well. I mean, it can be very, very weird and you don't want to be like, this is interesting. This is fascinating. Let me stick around for more of this and become more addicted. You, you've got to be very careful. You know, you're setting yourself up, um, you know, for, for a, a, a harder detox time. So you have to realize, you know, what the hyper arousal is, um, identified as such that it's a way to get people addicted to them and they will break you down so that you have to always sort of think about them always wonder, you might have a statement that's always going around. You might even just be re repeating their name over and over. You might be just be seeing image of them, intrusive thoughts over and over. You know, these are symptoms of um, intrusive thoughts. These are symptoms of brainwashing and gaslighting. This is not something you want to mess around with and just say, oh, this is just another part of my sacrifice, you know, for a relationship. No, you need to exit that state. You need to detox. You need to, you know, delete, delete, get things out of your viewpoint, out of your household, out of your inbox, out of your mind. You need to really clear and clean it out. You need to resensitize yourself, really understand how you got to where you were, the cause that's created the effect, the why, the hyper arousal. It's like an emotional taser stun gun so that they can get you 
just sort of paralyzed and fixated on them. Realize that this is not love. This is not connection. This is not, you know, um, soulmates. This, you know, is, is, um, is, 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 um, you know, manipulation. It is deception when in a female psychopath in a relationship that's bound to leave you feeling, you know, that you've, if you feel that you, ha you lost a lot to this person, I mean, you need to remember this and you need to pull back and, and really just calm your senses down and really, you know, soothe, do soothing things, soothing foods, soothing sounds, soothing clothing, get, you know, relax yourself, be able to control the fear and the terror and your normalcy, your I am will restore itself. Just keep looking forward. Stay the course. You can do this. It's your buddy. Peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out or peace in and have a, a beautiful day.